Hello and welcome to This Week in Ames. I'm your host, Derek Chrysler. On today's show, we'll talk about pedestrian control improvements. My guest today is Brian Phillips. Brian, welcome to the show. Thanks, Derek. Brian, now you're no stranger to the Channel 12 viewers. You have your own show called Where's Brian, and that's a uh, fan favorite. Can you tell us a little bit about the show? Uh, so on Where's Brian, we go around to different departments in the city and learn a little bit about the tasks that they do on a daily basis and get an opportunity to try out those tasks alongside them. And you have a regular job, which is the management analyst. Now, yes. what, is, what does that position entail? So in my position, I do a variety of different things. Um, oftentimes, I'm working with uh, other departments to coordinate their work within the city, um, which is part of the reason why I'm here today. Um, I also respond to things like city council referrals when they have um, questions about particular topics that they want some more information about, and things of that nature. And you've brought with you today a, a lovely prop. Can you? Tell me what this is. Yeah, so this is um, one of the newer style of pedestrian push button controls that we have that we're um, working on installing throughout uh, the community uh, at different intersections throughout Ames. So we have 72 signalized intersections in the community, and um, this particular style of push button is going to become our new standard um, for pedestrian controls. So um, it includes some features that weren't present on a lot of the controls that uh, we have existing. So this particular style of control actually provides you with some feedback, um, more information about the intersection that you're crossing. So it, uh, uh, first off, um, the uh, push button actually on the face of it has a raised arrow. So an individual who's sight impaired can feel the arrow and understand which direction they're actually going to be headed. Um, when you push the button, it beeps back at you so that it acknowledges that you've pushed the button. If you hold it down, it will tell you what intersection you're crossing. So it'll give you the name of the street. Um, and then uh, it will audibly count down the number of seconds you have left uh, remaining in the walk cycle. Um, so it gives you a lot more information about um, how you can safely cross the intersection. And then one really cool feature about it too is that if you are happen to be in the middle of the intersection and an emergency vehicle is approaching, um, it will tell you that the emergency vehicle uh, is coming with its lights and sirens on and it will tell you to leave the intersection as soon as you can uh, to get clear of, of the uh, emergency vehicle approaching. Oh, wow. so, so yeah, it's got a lot of neat features to it. So compared to the old ones, the old ones were just a push button mm -hmm. and then the the walk or don't walk signal would come on and yeah. it didn't have any of the audible features that you're mentioning. Right. So this particular style of push button is a lot more accessible, um, particularly to individuals who are sight impaired, but it also uh, has some features just uh, that are helpful to any user. Um, one of the requirements that we have now is that we have to install these um, with the arrow aligned with the direction that the crosswalk is. So you may see these, um, instead of being put on the traffic signal pole, um, being put on their own independent pedestal next to the uh, crosswalk. Um, and that helps a sight impaired user know that that's the direction they need to cross the crosswalk in. But it also um, is more helpful to people who, let's say, are pushing strollers or uh, have a lot of bags or things like that and they're trying to cross the street. They don't have to walk several feet away, push a button, and then walk back to the crosswalk. They can just push the button and go when the, when the light changes. So this is kind of the new trend in crosswalk signals. I mean, the old style is more or less not being used anymore. Right, so this is gonna be our new standard for um, new uh, installations throughout the community. And then we're also going through and retrofitting uh, different intersections throughout the community uh, to this particular style. So you said we have 72 signalized intersections mm -hmm. in the city of Ames currently. Yes. And some of these are already installed, correct? Yeah, we have uh, just about a dozen um, intersections that have already uh, had this, this style of push button control installed. Um, we are working um, as we replace intersection infrastructure. So when we replace the um, the traffic signal um, at all four corners of the intersection, we will go ahead and install this. Um, as part of that project. We typically do one or maybe two of those per year, um, those full reconstructions of an intersection. Uh, so this year, um, Stang Road and 13th Street was the big um, complete reconstruction. Um, 
but again, we'll do, we'll, we will replace those intersections as they age. Um, the older ones tend to be the ones that we're going after to make sure that they are um, still functioning appropriately and the, that the wiring and all the features of it are, are brought up to standards. So we'll replace these um, with those projects and then um, we have some money set aside in um, what's called our Accessibility Enhancement Program. And that program uh, provides funding each year for the next five years, which is the extent of our planning horizon, uh, to retrofit these signals in um, at different intersections throughout the community and also do some other accessibility enhancements. So that plan is different from our long-range transportation plan. Yeah, so the accessibility enhancement program is, um, is just basically the way that we um, convert our plan into a... Um, into action. So we've identified um, that we're going to have this $150,000 each year and we are asking for public input to help prioritize where we should retrofit these particular signals. So that public input that you're looking for, is it just the locations that would be most useful to the public? Or what other information are you looking for? Yeah, so we want to know, are there particular intersections that people use more frequently, um, that they feel like a more accessible pedestrian push-button control would be more useful uh, to be installed immediately? So um, we anticipate that we can do a couple of these per year, depending on the uh, cost of, of making the improvement and designing the, the uh, different features of the intersection. Um, so we anticipate you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four of these per year that we'll be able to do um, in a retrofit manner. And we just want to know where, the, where are the, the areas that we want to get done first. Um, ideally, at some point in the future, we will have all of our intersections complete. Uh, but we know that there are probably some areas of the community that are more frequently used by pedestrians. Um, and that may benefit um, from being retrofitted earlier. So how can people provide that feedback to you? Well, we have a survey available. Um, it's uh, online at the city's website. If you go to cityofames.org slash pedestrians, uh, there's instructions for the survey. Um, you can fill that out until the end of August and um, that will automatically provide us with um, updated feedback and we're going to go through those results and figure out where are the really hot spots that we need to um, work on installing these, these new push button controls sooner. Well great, Brian thank you for taking the time to come on the show and explain a little bit about this to our viewers. Absolutely, thanks. If you'd like more information on pedestrian crosswalks or anything else, be sure to follow the City of Ames on Facebook and Twitter. And if you want to catch some of the Where's Brian episodes, you can watch all the episodes on, online on YouTube at our YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe to that. That's all for the show. Be sure to tune in next week for This Week in Ames.